In this lab, you need to configure static NAT to make the network work. So on the outside PC, I'll open up a web browser and connect to myhttp.com. As you can see, we can access a Cisco Packet Tracer website that says Hello World. So I was successfully able to connect to the server using HTTP. Now we could also try and connect to it directly and notice that also works. So just to do that again, I'll connect to the server via its IP address and I'm able to connect to the server via the IP address. On the router show IP NAT translation, notice we have multiple NAT translations going to this IP address and port 80, and those translations are being NATed to 10, 1, 1, 100. So clear IP NAT translation star will allow us to remove the NAT translations. Show IP NAT translation, we only see the static NAT translations. So let's connect again to myhttp.com. Press enter. We can see the website. Show IP NAT translations. Here are the NAT translations. So as you can see here, there are the dynamic NAT translations that are created when the client browses to the server. Here's the static NAT translation. Now again, I added SSL. You won't see that in your lab if you haven't added SSL. That just allows me to do this. So HTTPS, my HTTP.com. That also works. And when I go back to the NAT translations, notice I see dynamic NAT translations for the client connection to the SSL server. So there's HTTPS or SSL. There is HTTP. Now what about the FTP server? I'll open up a command prompt. FTP, myftp.com. That's the domain name that we need to use. Before I do that, notice again that there are no FTP translations here. We don't see port 21. We see port 80 and 443. I can connect to the server. Username is Cisco, password is Cisco. You can see that information by clicking on the server, going to services, FTP, and here is the username and password. Now there are a bunch of files on the FTP server. So on the client, if we type DRR, we can see those files listed on the FTP client. And if we have a look at our NAT translations, so show IP NAT translations, notice we see port 21 as well as port 1028. FTP works differently to HTTP and other protocols. FTP control uses port 21, so the client is initiating a session to the server on port 21, but if passive mode is not used, the server will initiate the connection to the client. In this case, because passive mode is used, the client initiates a session to the server on ports that have been negotiated between the server and the client. Typically, the server would initiate a session back to the client from port 20. So here the port numbers are perhaps a little bit different to what you're used to. For the exam, FTP control, port 21, FTP data, port 20. So show IP NAT translations. Once again, we can see NAT translations for HTTPS, HTTP, and FTP. Now the last step is to test connectivity from the inside host. In this example, we haven't got an internal DNS server, so we're going to connect to the servers directly using their internal IP addresses. So I can connect to the web server, 
directly. And hopefully I can connect to the FTP server. And the answer is yes, I can. And I can log in to the FTP server. Now the reason why we're using IP addresses is this device is configured to use the external DNS server. That external DNS server is translating myftp.com and myhttp.com to external IP addresses or global inside IP addresses. That's gonna cause problems for this client. So typically what you'd wanna do is have a internal DNS server here. And as an extra now, I'm just gonna demonstrate that. So what you would do is you would have a internal DNS server and you would configure the client to use the internal DNS server rather than the external DNS server. So this DNS server would have a default gateway of the router. It would be its own DNS server. Or you could point it to Google as the DNS server. IP address I'll configure is 10.1.1.105 slash 24 subnet and under services we'll now configure an a record of my http and point it to the internal ip address of the server my ftp point it to the internal ip address so we could verify things ip config shows us the IP address of the server. Server can ping the default gateway. The last step is to enable DNS, so I need to turn the service on. Now on the DNS server, we can use NSLOOKUP to verify that things are working. NSLOOKUP myhttp.com may not work here because I made a mistake with the DNS server name. It needs to be its local IP address. So let's do that again. As you can see, it is now resolved. So ping my http.com, that works. NS lookup my ftp.com, that works. Ping my ftp.com, that also works. So now on the client, this is the internal client. Rather than using Google, we'll use the internal DNS server. So on the client, we've changed the DNS server. Let's verify things. So can it ping the DNS server? Yes, it can. NS lookup my http.com. That works. NS lookup my ftp.com. That also looks good. So FTP, my FTP.com. Let's see if that works. Now this may be a problem in Packet Tracer whether where it's still using the old DNS server. I'll check the web browser. So my HTTP.com. That's timing out. Let's check whether we can ping the server. So ping 10.1.1.100 seem to be having an IP connectivity problem here. So from the DNS server, can I ping the HTTP server? Yes, I can. And I can ping the FTP server. So what I'm gonna do now is save my configuration and I'll restart Packet Tracer. Okay, so I've restarted Packet Tracer. I'll open up the client. Let's verify connectivity. Can it ping the router? Yes, it can. Can it ping the DNS server? Yes, it can. HTTP server, now it can. FTP server, now it works. So FTP, my FTP.com. Notice I can now access the FTP server. So the internal client is able to access the FTP server using a different IP address to the external client. So FTP, my FTP.com, external client is able to access the FTP server as well. But notice please, 
nslookup myftp.com. This is the IP address returned by the DNS server to the external client. The internal client, however, is receiving a different IP address. So that's typically what companies will do. Internal PCs will use a different DNS server that resolves DNS names to internal IP addresses, whereas an external DNS server will resolve the domain names to external IP addresses. So nslookup myhttp.com, notice the IP address. Now external PC, nslookup myhttp.com, notice a different IP address is used. So there you go, the network is functioning as expected. How did you do? Were you able to complete the lab? Did you get it working? I'm hoping that you're enjoying these extra pieces of information and the additional content that I've added in the videos. Hopefully it teaches you something and you learn how networks actually work. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wanna wish you all the very best.